Right, so we've been playing around with Da Vinci's catapult and we replaced the springs with magnets using magnets as a spring. Now, the more observant of you will have noticed that it's quite easy to do that, but there gets to be a point when it starts to get harder. As you start to press it together, it gets really hard until, of course, there we go, we get it in position. Equally, you might have noticed that when we release it, there's quite a lot of push at first, and as we saw, that push falls off quite dramatically. Now we put these magnets in opposition, so like pole against like pole, which just means they're forcing each other apart. If I do that by my hand, as I press the magnets together, I can feel the force of repulsion. And as I push it more and more, then that force gets greater and greater, but it doesn't go up in a straight line. Actually, it goes up as the square of the distance. And that's not because they get weaker. A magnet has lines of force coming out of it. They have a density. So when you're close to it, those lines, there's lots of them in a particular area. As you move away, the area that they cover, because they're coming out like this in every direction, the area that they cover gets greater. And so the lines of force cutting that area, the density goes down. And they go down by the square because it's a square. We're talking about area. And so area covered has less lines of force. And so the magnetic force feels weaker. It doesn't really matter so much. What matters is that force is not linear. And springs have the same problem. They're quite strong to begin with. And then the force that they can apply drops off. Magnets are quite strong to begin with, and then the force that it can apply drops off. Now in something, something like a catapult, of course, that doesn't really matter so much, because we need a great big bit of oomph to get this thing going, or once it's going, it's basically going to move under its own inertia, and so we need the oomph to begin with, and then it dropping off doesn't matter so much. But if we want to use magnets as a consistent force, then that is a problem. And it was also a problem for clockmakers. Fortunately, of course, clockmakers came up with a solution and it's called the Fusey. The Fusey is in fact just a conical gear with a helix on it, a rope wound around it, and you can think of it as a variable transmission. It's a kind of CVT for the length of the cord. Fittingly, Leonardo da Vinci used Fusies and they've been around for a long time. A machine drawing from 1400s shows a Fusey. 1405 Fusies was seen in uh, loading crossbows. They generally thought to have come around in clocks around about the end of the 1400s or the end of the 15th century, if you like. But what we're going to do is create a fusee so we can use our magnetic battery more evenly rather than having it give that massive push, just like in a clock spring. Now to do that, of course, we're going to turn to FreeCAD. We're going to turn to FreeCAD because Tinkercad isn't very good at drawing spirals and we want a conical spiral. FreeCAD, however, is absolutely brilliant at it. So let's draw a conical spiral in FreeCAD. Okay, it's pretty easy really. Obviously we're in FreeCAD. Let's start a new file by clicking on new file and we want to sketch so we can click here on the create sketch. That will create a sketch for us. Now select the XZ plane and that will create the sketch on the XZ plane for us. There it is. Now we can draw a shape on this plane and any shape that we draw on this plane will be rotated so we can do whatever shape we like. I'm going to do a rectangle. We could equally do a circle if you want. So click on rectangle, draw some random rectangle. We're going to make that 20 millimeters, tab to the next one by let's say seven millimeters deep. Okay, so it's somewhere random and we actually want it placed on the line and we want to put some constraints on it. So the first constraint we need to put is to make this point coincident with this axis here. So we have a constraint coincident, click on that, click on your point, click on your axis and it will make it coincident. Now we want a certain distance from that center there. So go to the I click on it and we've got constrained distance. So we can click on the constrained distance 
click on that point, click on that line, and it will ask us to put some number in. Let's make that 50 millimeters. And now we have a fully constrained sketch, so we can hit close. Right, as you can see, it's on that facing edge, the XZ plane that we put it on, lying on the XY plane. And if we look here, we've got the helix tool. If we click on the helix tool, it will draw the helix automatically for us and bring up a selection of boxes that we can play around with. Let's zoom in. Here we can choose which axis it is, and here we can choose the modes that we're going to change. You can see we can change pitch height, pitch turn, pitch angles, and I'm going to do height, turns, and angles because I want this to be 100 millimeters tall. I want 10 turns. And I want it to be conical, so I want it at about 45 degrees. You can make it anything you like, let's say 60. And it will create that cone for us. Now we can reverse it so it points upwards, or we can create the cone with a, the twist in the opposite direction. I'm fine with that, so let's click OK. And there is our cone spiral. And that's really pretty much all there is to it. Now we did it at 60 degrees. A minute I'll change that to 45 degrees and show you how he change the parameters really relatively easily. And we could continue with this in FreeCAD. However, I'm a huge fan of Tinkercad as you know because quite a lot of the times what I'm doing, I'm doing for me and I want to just basically want it done quickly. I'm not really communicating with it. If anybody wants the files, I do that. But it's not really to communicate, it's really for me to experiment. So I can knock things up terribly quickly in Tinkercad. So let's export that now and then re-import it into Tinkercad and quickly knock it into shape of a fusey. First thing, let's see to change those parameters. If we click on our drawing, there it is, it pulls all this stuff up and you can see the mode height turns angles. We can change that mode if we want to by clicking on the down arrow and we can go back to the previous modes. We're going to leave it in height turns and angle. And here is the angle at 60 that we set it at. Let's change that to 45. So it's pretty easy to change the parameters of what you did. And now we've got a cone of 45 degrees, which is the cone that I wanted. Let's export that. So I hit it, file, export, STL. So here we are in Tinkercad, and clearly all I've done is import that spiral that we just created, and that is click import, choose your file, and import, and we've imported it. Now what we want to do is merge it with the cone that we've got here, and the cone is 110 by 110 by 55, which is a 45 degree cone. So to do that, obviously, highlight both of them, centre them to each other, make this pink thing a hollow, so make it a hole. You can see it's a little out, so just move it across, say, one. And then we can group them. And when we group them, we get the essence of our fusey. We've still got the top of the cone, so let's remove that by pulling down a hole. Lift it off the ground, say, 37. Make it stupidly big. Center them to each other. Group them. Now we'll put an axle hole through on it. Make it eight millimeters. 50 high. Center them. And then group it. And there we go, our fusy cone. Let's get that printed. Okay, and that's it printed off. Now, this is conic. In real clocks, uh, what they found was a conic section isn't so good. In fact, it's hyperbolic. But they found that out uh, by trial and error. They just 
tried loads of different designs until they came up with the best, but it was based on a cone, which they then changed. Now, nobody's ever done it with magnets before, I don't think so, so this probably isn't the best shape, but then we're going to have to find the best curve just by trial and error, so lots of experimentation there to find out which would be the best shape if you're doing this with magnets. In order to use this, what you do is wind it from the top to the bottom, so it'd be full of a string or a chain, and that would be in the wound up position. When it's unwound, that chain is wound onto a drum and it unwinds from this, and of course that changes the torque. So as we need it, because the spring is running out of power and we need to raise the torque, if you like, maintain the actual torque, then changing the diameter of this is exactly what does that. Anyway, I thought I would go into fuses, how to make them, show the free CAD and the Tinkercad side of things. I hope you found it interesting. Thank you very much for watching, and please do remember to like and subscribe.